Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Reverend Tony Lee, the pastor of the Community of Hope AME Church. And we're excited to welcome Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, legendary basketball player, committed social activist, and award-winning writer to speak with us about his AFib journey. Kareem was diagnosed with AFib after he initially ignored his symptoms and is now sharing his story to help others learn from his experience. We're also joined by Dr. Andrea Phillips, a family medicine doctor from Jackson, Mississippi. Dr. Phillips has been in practice for more than 20 years and is passionate about ensuring people of all backgrounds have access to the medical care and information they need and work with their doctor to get the care they need. Dr. Phillips does not personally treat Kareem, and this program is brought to you by the BMS Pfizer Alliance No Time to Wait campaign, for which Kareem and Dr. Phillips are paid spokespeople. Thank you both for joining us today in New York City. Happy to be here. And now, Kareem, talk to us a little bit about uh, your diagnosis and, and how you first found out that you were dealing with AFib. Well, I, my uh, journey with uh, AFib really started when I um, started realizing that it, at certain times I, I couldn't do things, be, just physically, I couldn't do them. And I, I thought it was just a, a temporary thing. And I, I wanted to ignore it and uh, hope that it would pass. But it kept uh, recurring. And it, it got to the point where um, if I wanted to get up and, and walk, let's say, 100 yards, I, I could only walk maybe 35 yards, and I'd have to sit down and rest so I could make another 35 yards. It's, it was uh, just uh, something I, I didn't understand and that I thought would, would go away because I'd been in such good health my whole life, you know, working out and uh, being a professional athlete. You feel you have a leg up on things, <laughs> and you don't. <laughs> now, at what point did you realize you needed medical attention? Well, I was at a baseball game, and um, I just had to go from one place to another, and I couldn't get there. I had to go several yards, rest, wait. On my way out of the uh, out of the arena, I, I you know I almost collapsed. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I had to lean up against the trophy case. <laughs> I could have broken it, probably. You know, it was um, something I, I was slowly coming to realize that needed to be uh, dealt with. And my business manager said she was taking me to the hospital. I went and uh, I was uh, correctly uh, diagnosed with AFib. Wow. Now, Dr. Phillips, before we go a bit further, um, can you talk to us a little bit about what AFib is? Yes. Um AFib or atrial fibrillation is an irregular heartbeat. It's a type of irregular heartbeat. In fact, it's the most common irregular heartbeat that causes a rapid or a real quick, fast heartbeat. Um, in the normal heart, the two top chambers of the heart uh, beat in a steady um, contractual beat. And, but with AFib, they don't beat steadily to pump the blood through the heart. They sort of fibrillate or quiver. So blood can pool in those chambers of the heart. And when blood pools, there's a likelihood that clots can form. Uh, when you have AFib, the risk of stroke actually increases five times than, than over the usual normal people that don't have AFib. And it's estimated that by 2030, approximately 12 million people in the U.S. will have AFib. My goodness. Well, wow. My goodness. Brother Kareem, how, how did you feel when you received that diagnosis? Um, I, <laughs> I'm laughing because I, I was still kind of skeptical. <laughs> <laughs> you know, here I'm in the hospital, and they're saying, there's something wrong with you. And I'm like, no, there can't be anything wrong with me. But uh, I, I got with it very quickly after that. And um, I, I'm doing what I have to do to uh, take care of myself and uh, watch my heart and uh, listen to the doctor when they, when they tell me something is going well or isn't going well. So now were you familiar with AFib at all? I was not familiar with it at all, other than my own experience. That was, uh, you know, my, my own experience with it was uh, a little bit too intense. You know, <laughs> and, and so in it all, what have you learned, uh, you know, in this process? 
uh, that you, you never know, uh, despite, let's say, how you felt and lived up to a certain point, you can have to deal with AFib and it's, it comes out of the blue. It's not necessarily something that uh, uh, you can see coming. You don't get fevers or things like that. All of a sudden, uh, you, you just, uh, geez, I got to sit down and, and rest a minute. I got to sit down and rest 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it progresses like that. It's interesting. You talked about it not coming out of the blue. My mother um, was diagnosed with AFib, uh. and, and she found out um, her heart just started beating really fast and really strongly. She was in the house by herself. Um, and she just, by God's grace, uh, walked and was able to get over to the neighbor's house uh. and had them call the ambulance. And the ambulance came and got her. She sat on their front porch. Um, Dr. Phillips, um, is Kareem's story, is my mother's story, are, are those common kinds of stories? Uh, yes, Reverend, they're, they're very yeah. common. Um, what I've seen among patients is that we often um, ignore those symptoms that um, come and go. Now, the, the symptoms that Kareem had, for instance, were the shortness of breath, um, especially exertional shortness of breath, uh, lightheaded feeling, and fatigue. Um, but the other symptoms of, of uh, AFib can also be um, chest pain, um, and then that really rapid heart Beat like your your mother had, or that uh, sense of your heart being irregular, or palpitations, or like your heart is skipping beats. The symptoms may be present very infrequently, once or twice, um, maybe mild. And patients tend to be relieved if they have it one week and then don't have it for another week, so they sort of ignore it especially things like the lightheadedness yeah. and the palpitations. So there's a, um, I think there's a denial there because mm -hmm. um, people don't want to, um, you know, have something very serious. But the importance of getting it checked out and not uh, ignoring those symptoms is whether they occur every day, once a month, infrequently, that the risk for stroke is still increased at that same level, five times more than patients who don't have um, AFib. So it's important to get it checked out because the, the person who can help you arrive at, a, at a, an appropriate diagnosis is your doctor. And it could be AFib or it could be some other problem that is um, serious as well. Also, it's important to go early in your uh, symptom symptomatology because the earlier that you're diagnosed, you may prevent something more serious from happening. So, Brother Kareem, uh, so when I mentioned to my parents that I was coming up here, thank you, you've made me, you know, the best son ever, um, that my brother, <laughs> he's a secondary child now. And so I'm grateful. Um, You're welcome. <laughs> but when I mentioned that I was coming to talk with you, um, and no disrespect, Dr. Phillips, right? Because um, I'm going to tell them about you as well. But when I told them I was coming to talk to you, like it was like I was coming to talk to a superhero. Um, my parents were just so excited and elated, <laughs> right? And, and, and so most of us look at you all who have been able to accomplish so much in sports, et cetera, as our great heroes. How... Um, have these symptoms impacted you in your everyday life? Because we don't picture these kinds of things having impact on kind of our great heroes. Well, f for me, uh, I didn't think it was possible that I, I could have a problem like that because I lived my whole life, uh, I ate well, I didn't become uh, an alcoholic or, you know, mm -hmm. use things that were, were going to, you know, take me down. You know, I tried to take good care of my health and I and think, hey, I, I've avoided everything that, mm -hmm. that, that was going to take me out and uh, found out very, uh, very dramatically that that's not the case. Wow. And you have to you have to pay attention to what's going on and listen to your doctor. Now, Dr. Phillips, Brother Cream just talked about, you know, ending up with a stroke and you had mentioned a, a little bit earlier about this five fold increase in possible strokes. Uh, with an AFib diagnosis. Uh, can you explain why um, it's that dramatic? Yes, as I um, um, referred to b before, the top two chambers of the heart uh, usually 
beat together and they contract together to keep blood flowing through the heart and into and out of the heart. When those chambers quiver and the blood pools there, clots can form. If a clot passes from the heart and travels to the brain, it actually can cause a stroke because it, it cuts off the circulation to that part of the brain. Um, and the strokes that occur as a result of AFib are often worse than other types of stroke. And as I alluded to before, it's a, there's a five-fold increase in that possibility in a patient who has AFib. So again, I cannot stress enough how important it is not to ignore these symptoms. Again, the symptoms can be anything from the palpitations or a really, really rapid heartbeat. Um, may not last a long time, but it happens. And then chest pain, shortness of breath, a lightheaded feeling or dizziness is what some people describe it as. Um, and the, the uh, and the fatigue, of course, just dragging through, pushing yourself through all of your usual activities. The importance of not ignoring these is whether the symptoms occur for a little while and then they don't occur again, you still have that fivefold increase in the risk of stroke. And you have the possibility of ignoring something that could be another kind of serious problem besides AFib or allowing the AFib to progress and be more serious, be the um, cause of something more serious later. And so you've shared with us a, a bit about these symptoms. What are the risk factors and are certain groups um, more likely uh, to be at risk for AFib? That's a very important question. I'm glad you asked. Uh, there are certain groups of people that are at increased risk. Uh, certain medical conditions like hypertension, diabetes, obesity, um, overactive thyroid, obstructive sleep apnea, uh, other types of heart disease um, can increase your risk. And then everyone age 65 and over are at increased risk. As you get older, the risk for AFib increases. Those are the things that happen that we don't have much control over. Then there are some things that we have a little bit more control over. Smoking and excessive alcohol intake are also related to um, increased risk of uh, AFib. But there are groups of people like African Americans who are at higher risk because they have um, a greater risk for having the diseases that uh, are associated with AFib, like hypertension and um, diabetes. There's a higher rate of obesity in, uh, among certain people of color as well. Uh, and so the, the fact is that one in, about one in nine African Americans will at some point in their life develop AFib. However, it's diagnosed at a, a lower rate in African Americans, but when African Americans get AFib, the outcomes are more serious. Um, so I, I have a special desire to make sure that we, um, as African Americans and other people of color who have a greater prevalence of these diseases that are often associated with AFib, make sure you pay attention to your body and if you have those symptoms, don't sit back and just say it's just something else. Listen to your body, go to the website, no time to wait, and compare the symptoms. If you're having any of these, um, you know, chest pain or the shortness of breath, any of the symptoms, the lightheadedness and fatigue that Kareem experienced, don't ignore them. Go and see your doctor and prepare for the visit so that you can make sure you're doing everything you need to to protect your health. Now, Kareem, we're grateful for you using your platform um, to be able to kind of share um, about AFib. Um, what made you want to join the No Time to Wait campaign? I uh, felt that uh, I might be able to uh, make a difference you know, mm -hmm. because uh, it was a total surprise to me as to how vulnerable I was. And I, I was having symptoms, but I couldn't recognize them. Wow. I didn't recognize them for what they were, you know. So uh, until, uh, I'm, I'm very fortunate. I, I, one of my sons is a surgeon mm. and um, 
He said, hey, hey, Dad, go get that checked out immediately. And finally, my business manager said, we're going today, the day that I went to the game. And, you know, at that uh, incident of uh, just not being able to, to get more than 20 yards at a time, uh, I was tired of it. Dr. Phillips, I'm sitting here and I'm listening to, so Brother Freeman, he's not just, I mean, he's a huge, you know, award-winning basketball player, but he's also a social activist, also a writer. I mean, he's just got all of these things going on. And yet, in all of his brilliance, he was hesitant about going to the doctor. Um, yeah. Why is it so important for people to go to the doctor? Uh, I tell my patients all the time, you know, you may have a, a diagnosis, you're going to have it whether you go to the doctor and find that out about it or not. Mm -hmm. So, you you know, you the, the importance of going to the doctor is this. That is the way that you can find out what is what the cause of the symptoms are. Uh, again, they can be AFib and there are some you know, once the diagnosis is established, there are some treatment options and they can be determined as you discuss them with your doctor. And if it is something else that is, is just as serious or that needs uh, medical attention, that can be decided there. You know, a lot of times I, I see patients who say, well, um, my cousin had the same symptoms and they went and they just said they were dehydrated. Well, they went. <laughs> so that's the thing. And the that's point your being <laughs> right. That the point being they went to see mm -hmm. and you know, fortunately for them, they just need to drink more water. But it doesn't mean that that is the same for you. Mm -hmm. So I, I always emphasize to patients, you live in your body, you know it, you know when something is going on. And you know, tr try not to talk yourself out of going to see what it is. Now, how can people prepare themselves for their doctor's appointment? This is very important. This is, an, um, I think, an opportunity um, that patients have and, and can benefit from Kareem's story about. He was having symptoms off and on, but ignored them until they kind of came to a climax where he had no choice but to, to uh, be forced to go by ambulance. If you track your symptoms, if you're having chest pain now and then, or... Uh, that lightheaded feeling, the palpitations or irregular beat or rapid heart rate, uh, feeling fatigued or lightheaded, you know, track your symptoms, write them down and write down when they occur and what the associated circumstances are when they occur. And then that will help you prepare for your doctor's visit. You also need to write down all the medications you're taking. And this is one of those areas that you know, all your prescription medications, all of your medicines that you take over the counter, all of the herbal supplements that a lot of people take now. Also, you want to take along um, any, any medical history, a list of your medical history. If you have hypertension already or diabetes, or you were told that you had overactive thyroid at some point, or you have an obstructive sleep apnea, you use CPAP or something, Tell your doctor all of that. Write it down before you go in preparation for the mm -hmm. visit. Also, you want to make sure uh, to bring your insurance information, that kind of thing, so that when you go there, you're fully prepared. It's not a bad idea to take along someone with you who has experienced, um, you know, seeing you uh, go through that lightheadedness or that fatigue and and they knew you before and they know you now and they can say, look, doctor, they're just saying this, but it's it was this bad. But all of these things can help prepare you to see your doctor, help you be able to tell an accurate story to your doctor. Now, there's a symptom tracker on the notimetowait.com mm -hmm. website that will help you if you are listening to this and say, oh, I've had some of this, maybe go to that website and, and get that symptom tracker and track that for a, a few days or weeks and, and take that in with you as well. But Doc, everybody doesn't have a Dr. Andrea Phillips, right? <laughs> I, I mean, just everybody who's so cool, laid back, easy to talk to. Uh, sometimes a conversation with a doctor can be a bit overwhelming. Um, do you have any tips to help people uh, to be able to navigate that conversation? Um, you've told us how to prepare for the visit, but in talking to the doctor, um, what tips do you have for that conversation? 
That's that's very good. Some you know, a lot of times that we've been in the middle of busy days and we you're coming for a routine visit, we expect to get in and out. One of the things that I tell patients to do is look the doctor directly in, in the eyes and say, I'm having some new problems and I wrote down the symptoms. That usually will kind of get his attention right away. I used to be one of those doctors that dreaded seeing patients who come in with lists. Now it's the best thing in the world because, you know, the memory, especially if you're in a little bit of denial, the memory will fade about how often you've had something. But if you write that list down, that list of symptoms and how much it's been occurring, it really will help you talk to the doctor. It will help the doctor listen to you. The other thing that really helps the doctor listen to you is when you have that other person with you as well. Okay. Now, Kareem, what are you hoping uh, that people can get from your story and all of this? Well, it's my hope that uh, people can become more aware of what AFib is all about, you know, how it's going to affect you. And if you have the symptoms, you know what to do. You know, you know to go talk to your doctor sooner rather than later. And, uh, find out exactly what's going on, and you don't have to have a, a, a very negative uh, experience uh, w with this problem. You have to give the doctors a chance to do what they do best. Now, I want to salute you, Brother Kareem, um, for all that you are, and, and you are huge. So, like, let's just be real, like, like you're a big deal, okay? So you are a big deal. I mean, it meant so much to so many down through the years, like I said, in various aspects of your life. But you've been able to take your pain and turn it to power. You've been able to take this situation um, and not let it overwhelm you, but once again show leadership. Um, and so I just want to thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Um, and, and this is incredible for you to be able to do that. Now, tell folks, how can they get more information? Well, there's a great website that you can go to. It's called notimetowait.com. And it lists uh, the things that you have to uh, look for if you're having a, a, a problem. And I think that's... Uh, a great place to start to see if, if you're dealing with something uh, that uh, could become very troublesome. And uh, information and knowledge is power, you know. So the more you know about what's happening to you, uh, the better your response to it can be, and uh, you will benefit from that response because of your uh, information that, that you have. So uh, try to find out all you can about what's going on with you. Thank you so much, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Thank welcome. you so much, Dr. Andrea Phillips. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Reverend Tony Lee. Mama, I made it. I've actually done something uh, that is a benefit. Uh, so all those teachers that said I'd never be something, Mama, send them this right now. Um, thank you. We are grateful. Notimetowait.com um, is where you need to go to get more information so that you can make sure that you're taking care of yourself. Thank you, and have a wonderful day.